For machines with cutting units, the hydraulic system will incorporate this screw. Depending on your tractor hydraulic configuration, this screw will be turned all the way in or completely out. For tractors with constant flow hydraulics, the screw will be turned all the way out. If your tractor has constant pressure or load sense, the screw will be turned all the way in. Moving to the pickup, the baler comes standard with a double roll crop press. This helps ensure a smooth delivery from the ground into the baler. There are multiple adjustments on the double roll crop press. To start, we can adjust the height of the front roll. With this bolt here, we can position it in the front or in the bottom hole for either a large or small windrow. Next, we can move on to the spring settings. Currently, we are in the transport position. All this does is make sure that the rolls are not going to bounce up and down while traveling down the road. But for certain crops, such as dry hay, silage, or straw, we can adjust the spring from either the top position to the lower position. So for crops such as dry hay and silage, we do not want to apply a lot of compression, so we'll leave it the spring on top. But crops such as straw, we want a lot of compression to ensure good material flow, so we'll move the spring to the bottom position. The pickup height can be adjusted using these stops. There are seven different positions available to achieve a one inch ground clearance from the ground to the pickup tines. Seven is the highest position which can be used for straw depending on the crop height at which it was cut, or one is the lowest which is usually used for dry hay. After setting the pickup height, we can adjust the pivoting gauge wheels. With these adjustments, we want the gauge wheel to be slightly off the ground. This will protect the tines from hitting the ground due to any uneven surfaces. The job of the pre-chamber is to collect the material and transfer it to the bale chamber. The Kloss Quadrant 5300 is equipped with an actively controlled pre-chamber. This pre-chamber is equipped with two sensor bars that help ensure a perfect flake. The core of the pre-chamber is the gearbox driven feed rake with its control cylinder and the two sensor bars located in the pre-chamber. The two sensor bars accurately sense the filling of the pre-chamber. A lower sensor bar is hydraulically pressurized while the upper sensor bar is spring-loaded. The pre-chamber has three different settings that can be set depending on the condition. Small windrow setting has a higher pressure on the lower sensor bar, while big windrow setting has less pressure on the lower sensor bar, and there is also an on-off setting which has a feed rake cycle of one to one. The Quadrant 5300 is equipped with a hydraulic drop floor. This drop floor can be used to access the knives. To service the knives, we will first lock the drop floor into place. We can now drop the floor. To access all the knives for service, the floor can be moved to either side of the baler. To access the knives and then remove them, we must first unlock them. Now the knives can be easily removed. When baling without using the knives, it is important to install the dummy knives. This ensures that the knife drawer will not become full of debris. These dummy knives can be found on the rear of the twine box. The number of knives in use during baling can be altered. To do this, you must first pull this lock and turn the lever to change the number of knives that will be engaged. On this fine cut model that we have here, we have 51 knives, and you can select either 25, 26, or 12 knives. On a roto cut machine, you have 25 knives and can select between either 12 or 13 knives. For proper twine routing, please reference the decal in the twine box. It is important to note that cloth twine should be used in this baler for optimum performance. For optimum knotter operation, it is important to have the correct twine tension. 
we can adjust the tension on the twine by adjusting the spring on the twine brake. After baling a few bales, we can check to see if we have the correct twine tension. We do this by looking at the twine guides. The twine guides should be running slightly above horizontal. To make sure it is in the exact proper position, you can reference your user's manual. If this twine is not in the correct tensioning, we can go back and either adjust the twine brake to be tighter or looser. Now we will move to the top of the baler where we will discuss knotting and tying adjustments. All of the adjustments that we will mention are referenced on this sheet that are delivered with each Quadrant 5300. Once a tying cycle is initiated, this electric motor will rotate a knurled wheel. The knurled wheel will trip this rod that starts the knotter cycle. This, this rod and the knurled wheel experience wear over time and they are important service items to watch. For proper knotter functioning, it is important to keep this Paul clutch clean of debris. It should be greased regularly so it has free movement and doesn't seize. Now we'll begin to look at needle adjustments. To start, we'll look at the height adjustment of the needle. To check this height adjustment, we want to move the needle to where the wheel axis point is just above the retaining plate. Then we can check the measurement to make sure it is 8 millimeters above. Using this tool, we can slide that in there to make sure that we're at 8 millimeters, which we currently are at. A key service area is the twine load sensor. This sensor needs to be kept clean of dirt and debris to maintain proper functioning of knotter monitoring and automatic pressure control. To check needle penetration, we will turn the flywheel until the needles are at top dead center. The recommended setting for needle penetration is 105 millimeters from the wheel axis to the retaining plate. We can check this with the tool provided to see that we are at 105 millimeters. We will now check the needle alignment to the knotter. The recommended setting is that the needle rubs slightly against the knotter, but not enough that it bends. You should be able to push on the needle very lightly and see that you are still having a gap between the needle and the knotter. After checking needle penetration, if additional adjustment is required, the tie rods can be used to adjust the needle penetration. It is important to note that needle penetration must be fairly equal across the knotter shaft, so it is okay if the tie rods are set to different lengths. Beneath the baler, you will find the area for adjusting needle height and alignment. To adjust the needle alignment, you can see this clamp here clamps the needle to this bar. To adjust this, there are four bolts that need to be loosened and then you can slightly move the needle either left or right depending on what alignment is needed. Once you have reached the required alignment, you can tighten those back down and secure it to the bar. For needle height adjustment, there are three bolts that lock the needle into place. To adjust the needle height, loosen these bolts and then you can use these bolts on the end of the clamp here to adjust your height either up or down. It is important to note that a small turn here correlates to a very large distance up top where the knotters are. So be careful with how large of a turn you make on those. Then once the needle height is to the correct position, you can tighten these bolts back down and lock it into place. Now we will take a look at the Kloss single knotter. This is the knotter that can be found on the Quadrant 5300. This knotter is very simple and it makes it easy to adjust. It is much simpler than a double knotter because there are only two adjustments that we'll talk about. First, the adjustment for the bill hook clamping force. This adjustment can be made right here on this spring. The recommended setting is 33 millimeters. Also, the retaining plate spring can be adjusted. This force from this spring should be set to about 28 millimeters. These two simple adjustments can be made to help solve any tying issue.